Welcome to the webinar today. This is Bill Baker at Firestorm. We're pleased to have you with us for this webinar that's going to be talking about testing plans. Our co-sponsor today and underwriter is the New Jersey MEP, and we're pleased to have them as the sponsor and co-host of this series of webinars. We invite you to become our Facebook friend at Firestorm Solutions. You can also follow us at Twitter on Firestorm Soul. There is a hashtag for this session, and the hashtag is Crisis Coach. The presentation that's being made today is not complete without accompanying oral comments and discussion, and the work product that will be discussed should be read in conjunction with the counsel that you've got from your uh, corporate counsel. Thank you, Blair. Moreover, the information and comments made should not be interpreted as legal advice or legal opinion. Firestorm transforms crisis into value, and Firestorm empowers you to manage risk and crises. Firestorm does have expertise in crisis management, critical decision support, crisis communication, crisis public relations, and consequence management. We also have expertise in testing and training and uh, training according to plans. Our co-host today is the New Jersey MEP. There's a, the sponsor of this Crisis Coach webinar series. Today we'll be discussing why, what, and how do you plan. Our presenter today will be Blair Neville, who is right up there with you. And uh, Joe Caratonito is on. He is with the New Jersey MEP. Joe, do you have any introductory comments for us? Um, I'd just like to um, say for those of you that are not familiar with New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program, uh, our mission is to work with the um, small to mid-sized manufacturers in the state to help them become more productive, more efficient, and more globally competitive. Uh, and we do that through a number of different services that we provide. Uh, amongst them, things like uh, energy, which we formed an energy alliance to help uh, improve the buying power of manufacturers in the state to get better energy rates, uh, helping them get R&D tax credits, um, helping with things like lean and process improvement, Six Sigma. Uh, we also get involved on the commercial end in terms of strategic planning and ISO certification, and of course, uh, business continuity planning which uh, brings us to uh, our subject matter for the day, and I'll pass that back to Blair to uh, take it from there. Great, Joe. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, is on the, uh, the webinar today. Um, we're going to keep this to about 45 minutes, and um, we'll have some time at the end for questions. Um, if uh, people want to um, have any questions, please uh, please ask, and uh, we'll try to answer them. If not, we'll get back to you afterwards. Also, at the same time, um, if there is anything that pops up, any ideas um, or questions, you can get back to Joe directly, and we'll provide you with um, the answers and also uh, a copy of the uh, slides and presentation will be saved. Um, so if anyone wants to download that, um, please, be, uh, uh, please do it. I'm more than happy to share this information. Uh, some of the slides may be a little wordy as we go through, and it's done kind of for, for a purpose. Um, generally, if you, if you download these, uh, this information, you can use these, this, the data as a guide as you set up your plan and, and uh, look at testing for it. So hopefully it will be very helpful for you. Typically when we start uh, our presentations, um, we take a minute and talk a little bit about an update. We kind of look back over the last... Um, you know, probably 30 days or so, and look at some of the highlights of things that have happened. The real purpose behind this is simply to uh, just reinforce the fact that, you know, crises do happen. They happen every day, and they do happen around you. Uh, things like the winter storms that seem to be coming on. We were joking before we started that uh, spring is tomorrow, but uh, if you look at southern Jersey last week and uh, places like West Virginia and Tennessee, the snow keeps coming. Um, hopefully it's ended, but along with that snow comes delays and power outages and shipping problems and, and inability of people to get to work. And all of those things affect you. So um, hopefully uh, we're done with that for the winter, but uh, you still have to be prepared for it. 
Um, everyone, I'm sure, is familiar with the building collapse in Harlem. Um, again, uh, put yourself in a position as a business owner if you were two doors down or across the street um, and how that would have affected you. Uh, it was a terrible experience for the people in there, and 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 um, we, uh, you know, we understand that. But at the same time, in running your business, uh, it's not always the accident or the crisis that happens to you directly, but it is your neighbor, someone else in a complex or a building. You have to be aware of. Um, Another, another area that we spend a lot of time in our practice is with workplace violence um, and with uh, crisis management wrapped around uh, violence issues. Um, in, in March of this year, and we're not through March, there's six separate events in the U.S. Uh, school shootings. Most people probably haven't heard of most of them. Um, fortunately, uh, or unfortunately, there's only been uh, two deaths in those six separate incidents. But it's a growing concern, and um, you know it affects the workplace as well. Uh, probably the, the most recent one and the most dramatic one was the Benjamin Moore plant in Vancouver, Washington. And uh, the question would be, is it, uh, it's a terrible thing, um, but the frequency of that kind of violence um, is, is increasing and um, is, is very significant. Another area is data breaches when it comes to your IT and, um, excuse me, your IT area and cyber protection. Target, everyone's aware of, and uh, if you're a shareholder of Target, uh, your fourth quarter earnings are down by 50%. So uh, it's, it's, it's an expensive, it's truly an expensive um, uh, crisis for them. The, the latest one is the Sally Beauty Holdings. There's about 25,000 people affected by that. Um, and just recently, actually, I got it this morning. It's not on here. I didn't put it on. But the um, California Attorney General um, sued. Um, a uh, Kaiser Foundation and a health plan foundation in California, not for data breaches, but the fact that they didn't report them quick enough. So on top of the fact that they had, uh, you know, a data breach, the fact that they waited three months, about almost three months, to report them, um, has got them in a in a lawsuit with the state of California. And uh, so I can imagine that's taking away resources, taking away money to deal with it. So this is becoming a bigger problem for, um, for most companies and something to be aware of. And finally, again, another area of practice is communicable illness. And um, I guess with the, wet, with the winter waning, you would like to think that this is going to be a problem. But there's just uh, one report from a, from a research group, BioRadar, that talks about the um, swine flu pandemic in 2014. So again, when you look at uh, large numbers of your employees not being able to make it to work and families affected by something like this, are you prepared for it? So that uh, kind of sums up the, the last 30 days or so, and uh, I believe it gives you a little bit of food for thought. Move on here. There we go. Kind of start with this. Uh, little bit of a uh, busy slide and I'd like to kind of start with this really to, to emphasize that in a crisis there's a lot going on there's a tremendous amount that happens all in the matter of, of literally minutes to, to, to day you know to, to hours into days and all of these things are, are something that you have to deal with and the question is are you going to be ready for it uh, what do you do where do you go how do you deal with this? So all of these words are things that we've dealt with in the past, and we've we've built plans for companies to uh, to deal with. But it really emphasizes the fact that, uh, that the kind of activity that's going on is um, is tremendous, and the amount of information that's flowing, typically wrong, um, is something that you're going to have to deal with in the time of a crisis. So the begs the question is, is why would I want to test these things? Why would I want to test my plan? And really, the, the obvious answer is uh, you want to know that you're ready. The plan is ready and, and it is going to be able to be used in a time of a crisis. And the key areas are identifying weaknesses and stimulating changes so that when you test, you have the ability to identify what's working, what's not working, and then take the steps to rectify that. Without testing, uh, there's no way for you to be able to 
to understand that the plan you spend time and money and energy is really is applicable and can um, you know it can be effective. The other area that's kind of key is is that uh, is obtaining buy-in with with all of your players when they're in the, when people practice a plan when a plan is tested it provides commitment and it provides buy-in from the groups that are doing the test it becomes their plan as well so throughout a business throughout a business um, it, it really drives what we call a culture of preparedness and creating the plan and having it in place is one thing but testing it and practicing it really drives that culture as part of your um, as part of your uh, plan and the thing to remember is Plans are really a continuous improvement. It's, it's a continuous improvement process that goes on here with, with the plan. And that constant reinforcement, checking, rechecking, really drives to improve and make it much more efficient. There's a variety of benefits. Really, I guess I kind of like to sum it up as practice makes perfect. You want to be assured that your response will be effective. That's really the key. The plan is your guide. And when you have to use it, you want to be able to make sure that guide is driving you in the right direction. The participation in your plan really drives and breeds familiarity. Things like the language that you use, the confidence with the goals, the understanding of those goals, all the different parts of the plan. And when you look at plans, um, they involve, you know, they're both broad and deep across a, across a corporation or a company, whether you're large or small. So, but you're involving people in the testing of the plan that may only be worried about their department or their group or their functional unit. But in practicing and having them part of those tests, they get to see the other parts of the plan. They get to see other areas of the plan. And they become invested in that success as well. So it really educates everybody and takes in, in, in sort of removes that silo effect where I'm very good at my area, but now I get to see all the vulnerabilities, I get to see all the impacts that could happen to my company. So I'm much better prepared to deal with it, even though I may only ever have to deal in my department or my group, but now I know what the other groups are dealing with. The other benefits really come down to identifying the weaknesses so you can drive change. Again, using the words I used uh, previously, it's kind of a, a constant improvement, a continuous improvement. So that identifying those weaknesses, and uh, allowing you to make those changes. And probably one of the most important areas and biggest benefits of a plan is this is the time to make the errors. It's OK. When we test plans, and we do, we test a lot of them for companies. We write plans. We, we write the tests. We try to emphasize that this is the time to make those decisions that may be wrong or try new things and try new, new ways to approach things, because you don't want to be doing that in a um, in a crisis situation. You want to be making decisions with, as best with the information you have the best way you can. So the ben one of the benefits of it is allowing you to make your errors and, your, and face the, the issues around a tabletop or with a group of people in a room that, that you can adjust and understand why uh, you might not make that decision there. So it's OK to be wrong. As a matter of fact, we, we push it to make those errors so that you can then make the changes to the plan. At Firestorm, we, we write a lot of plans, hundreds, maybe even a thousand plans for customers. Don't know, I'm actually not sure how many we, we've done, but it's, it's huge. And one thing that makes us different than a lot of uh, companies ourselves is we have the experience in a crisis. We've got people who have been on the ground in many crises, who have dealt with companies, um, and uh, have, have, have been there for, for weeks working with customers on, on communication plans working with clients on, on recovery plans. And there's one truism that, that, that we can be sure of is that in the first 24 hours, most, if not all, the information that's flowing at you, and trust me, that first slide that I mentioned with all the words that's flowing at you like a fire hose uh, is typically wrong. You're not sure. And the tough part is as an, as an owner of a company or a manager of a business, the key is, is you're trained. You're trained to make decisions with the data. You're trained to look at information, understand it, and make the correct decisions. Now you're being put into a position where you don't have the information. You don't have the, the right data, but you're still having to make decisions. 
So coming back to that point of a plan of saying, let's practice, let's test, let's stress this plan, allows you to be able to respond in, on instinct and be able to make good decisions with very minimal or no data. And that's a tough thing to do, because generally we're not trained to do it. So by practicing and having the information in front of you at the time allows you to make those decisions. And when we create plans for our clients, um, these are kind of the questions we ask. This is the, the structure we've put together, and these are the focus points for, for our customers. So when we run through a scenario, we present the scenario, we then uh, take time in, in groups, whether it's one big group or small groups, allow people to, to talk about them talk about what they would do. And these are the fundamental questions and the areas that we would we would walk through. What's changed from, from a steady state to now you're in a crisis? What do you know? Are you concerned? And probably more importantly is if you are concerned, what are you concerned about? And coming back to the last slide, how do you know it's true? What does your plan say? What is your plan prepared to deal with that particular problem? And given that something's happened, you know it's changed, you know you're going to put a plan together or you're going to react to it, what do you monitor? What are you looking at next so that you can try to stay ahead of the questions? And then finally, messaging. Who are you informing? Who are you getting involved? What resources are you calling in? Is it your people or outside? Those are the areas that we test and stress a little bit when we go through our plans. And it really drives to that thinking about, it's not what you think, it's what you know. That's what it comes back to. And you know very little, so you need a guide, and that's where your plan comes in. Purpose. Purpose of a plan sort of those highlighted areas stress the key points. I like to kind of summarize it in, is, is, the, is the plan feasible? Can it work with the resources in the, in, that are available under the actual conditions? So that's one of the, the, the key areas is, is that if I'm going to test my plan, I'm going to create a test model for my plans so that, so that I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that they're correct plans. First of all, do they make sense? Are they feasible? And really, that's with the resources that are available and under, the, under the conditions we set up. You want to be able to, to, to measure. And really, what you're trying to do is measure, measure how well your people understand their, their response functions. People that are involved in a plan and part of a continuity um, team know what they're doing and know what they're supposed to do. But the key is, do they know how to do it? So the purpose is, is finding out by measuring what's happening is, is, do they know what to do? And more importantly, do they know how to do it? And collecting the data from the, from the exercises. Once you use that data, A, to improve, enhance the plan, both the people, the response time, and really continue, as I said before, you heard me say it again, it's a continual improvement model. And understanding does this plan make sense for you and your business? Is it feasible? Are my people trained, first of all, on what to do, but how to do it, and take the data from the plan and enhance it and drive it back in to improving and making sure the plan fits, fits your business. Now, and every plan needs this kind of a scope and objective. And again, you have to put some gates around your planning. And you know, we advise one of the key areas is, as a business, you've got to continue to run your business. So when you're creating plans, it's important to recognize you still need to run your business. You can't shut down for two days to do, a, to do an exercise. You can't stop shipping product. You've got customers. You've got vendors. You've got clients that need to be addressed. So when you're building a plan, creating the scope and the objectives for the plan, that's probably key, is that you're going to be taking resources offline for a morning or a full day. But you've got to keep in sense that you, you don't want to affect your normal business operations. At least you want to minimize that event. The other area is complexity. You don't want to, uh, as I say, kind of eat the elephant all at once. 
if you haven't done testing before, gradually increase the complexity. Start simple, and um, you know, give, give your team team time to ramp up. If you get too complex, then it takes too much time, too confusing, and you miss the um, you know you, you can miss some of the objectives. The idea again is to un uncover things that aren't working. So if you're spending too much time on creating the plan and there's too many variabilities and variants in the plan, then you lose sight and kind of lose the forest for the trees. So you want to keep it focused. Um, at the same time, uh, there's an opportunity to, to interject some unplanned events. That's a great way to test a plan is keep it simple, but at the same time, um, maybe maybe have your vendors get involved with the plan at one time once it's a little more mature. There's a rule called the one two three rule that says you should be three people deep. So when you're doing a plan, instead of having the key person number one who's responsible, have their backup or even their backup be the one that's going to run that piece of the plan. So again, the objectives are to uncover the uh, cover the things that aren't working, but keep in mind when you're looking at a scope of the plan. Keep it something that's containable. Keep it something that, that makes sense for your business. Uh, you want to continue to drive your business, but at the same time, you can, you can add nuances to the plan very simply by changing events, changing some of the people that are involved. And make sure when you have your objectives that you're informed, that, that people are informed about, the, um, about your objectives. The expectations. Um, again, when you set up a plan and you and then you set up your testing model, you need to be realistic. That's probably the biggest thing. You only have so much time. Um, you only have so many resources. Um, keep the plan within certain boundaries and realistic. And what I mean, uh, meteors can be a problem and a devastating problem, but probably not something you want to plan for particularly or test. Uh, zombie apocalypse is probably another area to stay away from. You want to keep focused on the things that, that you think might affect your business. Again, not too complex. You only have typically a, um, a few hours to do this at most. And uh, you, don't, you don't want to be bogged down in, in a lot of minutia. Um, typically keep it to one or two threats, which might be a weather event or a vendor event, a combination of those two. It could be, a, a uh, again, a, a vendor problem and a, um, a machinery problem, production facility problem. Could be a, it, it could be a, a uh, you know, simple as a gas leak and how you would respond to those kinds of things. So keep the, keep the threats to one or two. So again, not too complex. I'm sorry about that. I do apologize. I uh, uh, sorry. I do apologize. I, I hit the key here and. Um, as I was saying, jump back to the expectations of it. Uh, test the exercises. Um, the uh, one or two key areas should be your focus. Again, as I said, mix them up a little bit, but keep it to one or two. Um, and focus on your emergency, emergency response procedures and bring in that escalation. So as you move through attached, you'd be escalating the problem or growing the problem. And the key is the notification procedures, how you're communicating in your business. We find that those understanding the procedures as the problem grows is, is a key area. And one of the other things that a lot of people forget is that they test plans. And what they do is they test plans um, and they, they walk through the test, but then they turn around and um, they forget to talk about, about the, the end of it, the full recovery procedure. So we've tested the plan. We understand how we'd respond. But there's also returning to normal. 
and taking a moment to think about that as well. And that um, as you return back to, to normal, how are you going to do that? Uh, now that you, the, the crisis is over, what do you do then? So a lot of people kind of forget that piece of a, of a plan. We've broken the plans up into to five uh, types. First one is a um, what we call an orientation or walkthrough. Very high level, typically a great type of a plan to do maybe for new hires or if you've just finished a plan, first step is to, to do the, sort of a high level walkthrough. Um, and uh, it, you, you keep it at a, at a little higher level and, and, and it focuses the staff on what's in the plan, what is the leadership role in the plan? What are the elements of a plan? Again, high level, walk through, as I said, maybe part of a new hiring group or if you had a, a change in the business and you want to go back and revisit the plan, really forms and kind of puts you in a position where um, you, know, you, you, you understand the elements of your plan. The next type is a drill. And just as it says, it's typically a fire drill or maybe a tornado drill. And it's just a drill to exercise a piece of your plan, typically around your, um, typically around your, your evacuation maybe um, areas. Uh, it takes a, a, it says about a month to plan. And really what we're thinking about is when you do these, it doesn't take long to do them, but what are you looking for in the plan? What are the elements that you want to, to review afterwards? What are the things you want to take away? That's what, take, that's what the time takes in the planning is what did I, what are the things I need to look for during the drill that I can then go talk about afterwards. So you need to, that's what takes the time to plan for those types of things. Tabletop. We do a lot of tabletop testing and really as, as it sounds, it's um, getting a group of people on the tabletop and walking through a true simulation. And a little later, before we end here, I'm going to walk through a couple of these very uh, very quickly and show you the kind of scenarios we, we would create for customers. And you walk through your procedures, resources, and it really is a fairly thorough test. Typically, you might have one or two people guiding it, someone taking notes, and it really is a chance to, um, to, to truly exercise the, the, the plan without having to get outside resources involved. Again, the planning time a couple of months maybe to plan for it because you have to create the scenario that makes sense for you and for your business. You have to take, create a scenario that will test your plan and the elements of your plan and relates to your plan. And thirdly, coming back is that once you do a debriefing, you want to be able to say these were the things we were looking for. Here's what we saw. Them, saw. So you don't want to go in blind and try to test it because then you won't know what's, what are the things you're, you're, you're trying to fix if, if they show up. The next one is a, what we call a functional test, um, and that is, uh, you know, where you get some outside resources and, or in, particularly internal resources, I should say, maybe uh, maybe a, a first aid team, uh, maybe it's something that um, you you work a test inside your building where you have no internet connect, uh, connectivity. So you have to respond to the plan without being able to use the internet and being able to exercise the, that piece of the plan. So what do you do? So it's really um, you, de you deploy some type of a scenario or some type of operational resources um, within your building, within your plant, and you work through your plan. Again, it takes a little more time to plan it because there's more moving parts. Um, and uh, you know, the test would be, be 90 minutes, but then there's a lot more debrief on this because there's, as I say, a little more moving parts and more people and maybe some outside. This is where you might even bring in a, um, a vendor that you're working with and work with them on it. And finally, a full-scale test is a large exercise where you might bring in first responders to your site. You might, if you're going to do a, a lockdown, um, or an active shooter environment, if you feel it's necessary to do that, then as I said, you're bringing in police, you're bringing in outside um, resources. You might um, you know, re truly exercise a first aid team and, and having them. This requires a lot more planning because again, there's a lot, there's, there's outside people involved in it and could literally mean shutting down a plant or, or an operation or part of an operation because you need to evacuate people, you need to have them outside for, for a, a period of time. So those are the, the types of plans we see. 
and, and we, we've worked on. Once it's done, the next logical step is uh, the follow-up. How do we follow up on this? And simply review the test and answer the questions. Best time is right after it. You don't want to wait a week or 10 days to do it. You want to do it the same day or the next morning. And really uh, reviewing what's happened, collecting feedback, finding out lessons that have been learned. Um, get feedback from all the participants. And particularly, we advise it, it, it's command and control, coordination, and communication, three, four Cs, is who was in command, how did that work, was the information that needed to be moved back and forth moved, the lines of communication, were they open, were they available, and who was coordinating it. Those are the key areas that really tell and, and we have kind of advise on, on focusing on. And a way to do that is we like each, what we do is each function, business unit, depending on how your plan or your company is set up, typically we, we see business units or, or functional groups within a company that are part of a plan have them break off, have their discussion, and that chair or that person come back and report to the larger group as to how their piece of the plan worked or their involvement worked. But the key is to collect that information so you can evaluate, you can take that feedback, get the lessons learned, and then in turn you know, improve the, the plan. All that data comes back to an analysis phase very straightforward is this is the time to take all that information. So after you've collected the data, were your objectives met? Was the test valid? Did it make sense for your environment, again, given the resources and the time you had? What were the corrective actions? Did you have anything that was obvious you needed to correct? What were the red flags that appeared? You know, that gives it time to do a gap analysis. And years ago, um, one of the models I worked on it was a uh, representation of, of what is really risk. And if you kind of draw it out on a, on a curve, risk tends to be viewed as, as on one, one line on a curve and reality on another line on a curve. And as those two lines over time start to separate, the bigger the separation, the higher the risk. And that's what you're looking for. You want to collapse those curves keep your, your plan, your action plan, and the results as close to your, the, the, your excuse me, keep the reality as close to, to your plan. And this analysis, once you've got the data, allows you to understand what were the what were the holes or the gaps that forced those two curves apart. Again, once you have this information, you can have modifications to your plan and recommendations for future testing. Done with it. As I mentioned as part of our, our, our work today, I want to walk you through very quickly um, how, to set, how we would set up a plan. First of all, this is a little bit redundant in that we've talked a little bit about our objectives, but if we were setting up a plan for you or you're setting up a plan to exercise your, your setting up a test to exercise your plan, these are the first objectives. You want to validate and understand your, your process, which is straightforward. You want to identify impacts of the crisis. In this particular case, specifically, you want to understand communication process and the content of that communication throughout the phases. You want to look at how you adjust your response and recover strategies and opportunities to improve once you get that data. Now, your objectives may vary a little bit, but you need to you know, lay them out and those five keywords might be a great way to start. What are you going to evaluate? You're going to identify what holes or gaps in your plan. You want to understand something about your plan and then find ways to make your plan better. Always have a few assumptions. People that are working through a test need to understand that uh, they only have so much data, so they have to respond against the data. You're asking them to make the best decisions based on their situations that you're giving them. And, and you're, you're trying to get them to draw on their understanding of their departments, their planning, the resources they have, or what they know of maybe what government being fire and police and first responders will, will provide for them. And 
one thing to remember, there's no predetermined solution or, or exercise here. This is a test to see where we can improve. So again, these are the assumptions in typically we might use. You might have a few others in, in your, your group, but uh, this is a, a, a good set of examples. State your goals. What are we trying to achieve here? In this particular case, we want to we want to understand roles and responsibilities and how they inter interrelate. So again, that command and control. Does everyone know their roles? Does everyone have the right responsibility? We're expecting people to do something during a crisis. Do they have the they have the responsibility to do it? Do they have the authority to do it? That's a big one that usually pops up. I need to go do something, but I don't have the authority to spend the money. I don't have the authority to make those decisions. Probably not the responsibility that they should have. Understand the importance of of the you know the plan, the response and recovery pieces. Gain some insight into the capabilities, and using the plan in an actual environment or in an actual test allows you to stress that plan and find out its effectiveness. So again, these are typical goals that one might have in an exercise. Again, creating your exercise, first step is give the group some information. Maybe a description of the company, is it a warehouse, is it the whole company that's affected, the operations in this case maybe 24-7, um, is, it, is it during the day, is it not during the night. Give them the parameters. That's the scope we talked about earlier of what a test might be because they're going to use this information. And that's what we said before. Giving them the guidelines avoids giving them the guidelines avoids them going out and getting too complex. So here's a typical event. Here's a here's a what a typical test might look like. Alarm sound. Uncertain origin, there's confusion in a plant, 911 is called. Sprinklers are triggered, people are seen running. You're getting varying reports. Security is notified. Literally a minute later, there's uh, confusion continues. Activity is centered on a warehouse area. People are running, some crying. And there's phone video of the confusion and panic is starting to be shared. More escalation. Bomb blasts mentioned in the text messages. So coming back to that slide I showed you earlier in the presentation, what do you know? What are your concerns? And if so, what about? What's the plan? What's your next plan of action? And once you take those couple of steps, what are you going to monitor? So in a test scenario, we would go through that, asking each group, each person, allowing them to take the time to think about this question, maybe asking each group to give one idea about what, what are their concerns, one thing about what they know. What are the elements of the plan will be tested? Obviously, response and evacuation, communication to outside, for, uh, outside first responders, things like social media, given there's pictures we just heard. Um, are being taken. Where are they going? What does that mean? Is that important? So those are the pieces of information that we would stretch, take out of this first step and then apply them to how do we deal with them with our plan. Now we have an update. A couple of minutes later, fire and police are stashed, more reports of explosion and injuries. There's just more confusion. Screams heard, security arrives. There's debris in a widespread area. Injured are seen by security. Paramedics are dispatched. Again, the next step in an exercise might simply be what's changed? What do you know? What do you know from the last time? What kind of data are you collecting? How do you know it's right? Who's making these decisions at this point in time? We wouldn't advise in a first exercise, or maybe it's the first time you've tested the plan, and going, as I said before, keep it simple. This is an example of, of maybe that phase two issues, where if you've run a few tests, if this is something you've done a couple of times, you then take those discussions to the next level. Um, 
you know, and I ask you, if you think about that environment I just went through very quickly, I realize, um, are your employees trained for something like that? Which ones? Does your plan include an active shooter response? Was there an active shooter there? How do you control access to the site? Do you make a decision to evacuate or shelter in place if that under that environment? And who makes that decision? And then how do they communicate it to the employees? So, so I don't want to go too deep into these, but, but <coughs> excuse me. Initially, we would look at those five questions or four or five ideas and stress those, and then we can take it to the next level as you become a little more mature in your process and in answering these questions. Give you another quick one. This is actually a true story that uh, we had some involvement with. It's a manufacturer in the healthcare industry, a large company, two billion dollars and uh, basically make upholstery and in the industry. The major component is uh, polyurethane foam. Large space, large warehouse facility, very large warehouse facility, um, but uh, always can trying to control uh, inventory uh, because it uh, takes so much space. And, and again, we would walk through, they've gotten some news that 50% of the, the necessary product uh, due to a shortage of TDI, they can only provide 50% of their product due to a shortage of TDI, it's a chemical compound. At the same time, four of the nation's TDI suppliers communicate that due to the effects of recent hurricanes, they have to declare force majeure, which means they can restrict their contracts because of that. So initially you would think it's a supply chain problem. They, um, they get some more bad news and they only have minimal inventory. Before I talk about this slide, I just want to say that that might be a typical scenario that we would work through. And um, when I did this, I did this recently with, with two different customers, and we went through it. And the surprising thing was, as you go through it, the, the key area was the crisis communication. It always kept coming back to, to communication with your vendors, with your customers. And um, it started out as what we thought was a supply chain issue. And it was, but uh, the, the areas of communication within the plan became really the focal point. Finally, um, on a debrief, some basic questions again. Was your plan tested? Was it the right test for your plan? And did you get all the pieces of your plan? What, what weaknesses were revealed? And what do you have to do to complete or improve that, that plan? Typically, take two or three priorities and say, these are the things we're going to work on again. You can only do so much. You only have so many resources. So take two or three of those top priorities and work on those in your plan. And what were the impacts of the test? comes down to what did we learn? How are we going to take what we learned? And then take that information and, and bring it back into the, the plan. Our model, if anyone's been on our presentations in the past, um, you'll see this uh, predict, plan, perform. This is the model that we use in our, in our process to understand and predict the vulnerabilities for a company and uh, threats and the impact, develop some plans around them, and then exercise and perform against those plans to try to, try to build a, um, a solution for our customers. And this is the way we would, we would do the same process with our uh, testing of our plans as well. Um, we have an assessment that um, we're working with NJMEP. This is a great opportunity to maybe uh, do an assessment of, of your business and or um, um, of a plan and help you with that. If you're at the stage of a plan, we can, we can work through that as well. And um, you, know, you can thank NJMEP for, for helping us with that. Bill, I just want to, uh, there's a couple of minutes left. I know I talked fairly fast to get a lot of data in. Is there any questions? There are not. If any of you have questions, please type them into the question facility, and we'll uh, try to answer them. Um, but uh, no, you, you've done a good job on this, covering this information, Blair. How, fre wanna... how frequently should you test your plan? Well, um, if you remember, there's those five 
different types of plans. We recommend that each quarter you take uh, you, you take an, an, a, either a piece of the plan or an overview of the plan to to you know continue to reinforce the importance of it to the area where if you're really doing a tabletop test that might be done once a year or or smaller one maybe biannually. Uh, it varies from company to company and resources that someone would put into it, but um, it, 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 to us, I think it's more of the consistency of it, whether it's biannually or annually or even even monthly, if you can afford the time. The key is to be consistent, continue to do it, and drive that culture of awareness tr through the business. Okay, here's a question. Great. Well, um, um, if there's no questions, as I said, I'll. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, how should you involve the local police and fire departments? Generally, especially in, in, the, in the drill areas, if, um, if you can get the fire department to come out or if uh, during the drill to, 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 to be your, thir to be your um, you know, independent third eye to kind of walk through with you, make sure that the, the timing is right, make sure that your procedures are followed. Followed. So, um, are, are the doors shut properly? Depending on what your plan stipulates, the the fire, um, especially fire, is uh, department is very willing to to help you and um, and guide you on some of those things. Again, if it's a police event or an ambulance, to to um, if you're having a fire drill, to um, maybe talk to to those groups to uh, to find out you know what their response time is. Are they aware of it? Especially if fire alarm starts to go off, people will start to respond. And I know police and fire will are very willing to come out and be there um, with you. A for a couple of reasons. One is it reinforces your commitment. Number two is they can provide some guidance as to how you get out of the building, where you stand, how you you know, especially if there's going to be emergency vehicles there, they can tell you where people should be going. Is probably one of the biggest things. And then if you had this had to be concerned about a, an active shooter environment or workplace violence, the police. Um, can help you and provide guidance with that as well. Very good. Uh, that that's all we have right now. And well, then I want to thank everybody who's who's on the line. As I said, Joe, myself, you you saw our emails, and um, and please, uh, we're, we've recorded this. It's it's on our website. You can download it or just send us a quick email, and we'll get you a copy of the link. And as I said, some of the slides were a little wordy, but that was done so that uh, if you're you're using it as a research tool, which you're more than welcome to do, then you can take that information and use it in your, um, to help you with your testing. Okay, Bill, thank you. All righty, Blair, thank you. Very informative. Hey, Joe, thanks, man. Okay, take thank care. Thank you, Blair. Okay. Bye now. Yeah. All righty, bye-bye.